Well, hello, welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. I'm coming down here to Southern Ohio to check on a few things. It's been quite a few weeks since we last worked with our water tank over there and had the water tank issues. Uh, we're gonna touch on that. I'm gonna check that out and see if uh, the water is dirty or if we got any other surprises with it. We got some odds and ends to do down here. I'm gonna be testing out uh, this multi gas tool, basically. I tested it out a little bit at home. It's made by Badger. And I thought that this would be a good thing to bring down here and keep down here. It's got a weed whacker because we're going to be doing a lot more weed whacking with the way the hillsides are here. It's also got a pole saw attachment. And then some hedge trimmers. So that's going to get a little bit of a workout. And I think it's going to be perfect to leave down here. It didn't break the bank. If for some reason we had a break in or something like that, I wouldn't be too heartbroken about it but i'm looking forward to testing it out here on the trails and in the area around the house and just see how well it's going to do and then we got a few other odds and ends so why don't you stick around and check it out This is the first time changing our water filter, which is in the crawl space since we've had the dirty water issues. And I'm gonna put a new filter in and see what kind of water comes in. Looks pretty clear. We'll have to check the tank out a little later and just see what's going on down in there. If you watched the channel before, you know that this is our Southern Ohio property. We use it for hunting. We used to have a cabin on it and we tore that down last spring, last spring meaning in 2023, and we put up a new prefab home. But in order to do that, we had to change the grade of the property dramatically, and it's created a lot more maintenance now when it comes to cutting grass and controlling weeds. We still are deciding what we're going to do here to try to keep this uh, low, more low maintenance. But uh, right now, we're just kind of living with it, and every time we come down, it's more of a job for a weed whacker than a lawnmower. These weeds against the house is just a haven for bugs to hang out and then of course they're going to get in the house also. We're not sure what we're going to do around here. I think we're going to put a couple feet of gravel around it, lay down some fabric and put some gravel so at least uh, we can keep that stuff at bay. But there's still a lot of areas that need to be addressed so we're not spending all our time just doing yard work every time we come down in the summer. All these attachments just lock in nice and easy and then it's just tightened down with a thumb screw. Ah, uh, ah, uh. 
back. That old cabin wasn't so bad. <laughs> I'm thinking. Didn't have to work on the pile of the old cabin. This has been a work in progress, but there's a lot of stones in our yard, especially after the excavation took place. We're trying to get as many as we can so we're not hitting it with the lawnmower, or if I bring the brush hog down and the tractor, then we're not going to hit that either. Also, there's quite a few roots that are sticking up from when they took out a bunch of trees, so we need to take care of all that stuff too. JD would have been more suited for this type of task, but uh, I just didn't have the time to bring it down and I'm still using it up in northern Ohio, but perhaps my next trip I'm going to bring it down and we're going to move some larger stones around. Alright, so pretty good workout today. I really uh, used this more intently than I thought we were going to do. A lot of weed whacking. Mainly we used the weed whacker today and we almost went through a whole spool of the string in there. Also we used the uh, chainsaw attachment quite a bit. We did not use this uh, brush hog attachment but uh, this seems pretty standard. We didn't want to use it on the hillside there because it would probably kick up some stones. We don't want to risk uh, breaking a window or scratching one of our trucks up. But this will come in handy more likely when we're on top of the hill and we're just clearing some trails up on top there. The hedge trimmers I really didn't use down here, but we did use those up in Northern Ohio and I used them on our hedges, of course. And that seemed to work okay. Now I would say if you're gonna buy a dedicated tool, let's say a uh, still, let's say you're gonna buy a still weed whacker, you're probably gonna pay more than what all four of these came to. But that still weed whacker is probably going to give you a little bit more endurance and it might be a little bit better quality. But in the long run, this thing did pretty well. The engine was pretty powerful. It's 26 cc's. The string trimmer is 17 inches. Um, the pole saw is 9.4 inches. The hedge trimmer is uh, 16 inch. 
and then the brush cutter is 10 inches. So just to give you an idea of that. Uh, it was easy to start every time. There's some uh, tools that I've had that if you shut them off, sometimes they're harder to start actually when they're warmed up. But when it was cold or warm, it started up pretty easy. I think this is going to be a, a nice addition down here. It's, it's one of these things where if you're a landscaper, you're probably not going to want to buy something like this if you have a landscaping business. But if you're a residential homeowner, I think this will work out perfectly, especially if you're on a budget, just to get you started with a, a bunch of tools all at the same time. So it'll give you the chainsaw, the hedge trimmer, the little brush cutter, and then your weed whacker. They do make a, a lot of other tools. So for instance, this engine is 26 cc's, but they also make a 52 cc. I don't think they make the multi-tool in that sort of power. This is warranted for three years. It's a residential warranty. So I assume if you're using it for a business that they're not gonna hold the warranty for three years. This is great for a residential new homeowner. This is gonna work out perfect out here where we're, we're not here constantly. But I'll tell you, when we do come out here, the job is all the more tougher just because uh, we let things grow for like three or four weeks and then have to hack it all down. So it, it is getting a workout. It's only going to get a workout about four or five times a year. One thing I did like about the pole saw is that it, you can put your chain oil right in here and it will just feed it oil. Where I had another pole saw where I had to manually take a little tube of oil and, and kind of just oil up the chain every time before I used it. And that got to be a little bit of a pain. That little container of oil always leaks on you. And this makes it a little bit more convenient. It hasn't leaked at all. It's been on its side. It's been upside down when transporting it and storing it. And I haven't seen any oil leak out of it. So that's nice. Now the hedge trimmers, they seem to have done a decent job at home. We used them on our burning bush and some other plants at home and it seemed to work just fine. I would say that my dedicated one that's made by Still is more powerful and it'll cut through some pretty thick branches where this, if you've got some branches that are going to be over, uh, I would say over three eighths to a half an inch, that this would be a little bit tough, especially if you got multiple ones that you're trying to cut through. But if you're cutting some of the new thicket that's growing like around here right now, it has no problem getting through that. And same thing when your hedges start growing, it seems to work okay. I do like having that extra reach and I liked having this adjustability of this here. <laughs> So depending on what angle you're working on, you can kind of tailor make it for the situation that you have. Now this does use an oil and gas mixture like most two cycle engines and it is 100 to one, which is the same ratio for my still equipment. So I can use the same oil and gas mixture. One thing that um, I will say about having this in a multi-tool configuration is if I were to come down here and uh, let's say I had a tool for each one of these jobs. So let's say I had a weed whacker, then I had a pole saw, and then I had a hedge trimmer and they were all gas appliances. A lot of times with me, that engine is gonna get only used sparingly on each one of them, where here I feel a little bit more comfortable down here because I will probably use this more often, so the gas is not gonna be sitting in here as much, where if I just had, let's say, just the hedge trimmers, I might only need the hedge trimmer once a year, and then the gas is gonna be sitting in that all year if, unless I drain it out. In, in this configuration of having all four tools in one, you're gonna go through more of your oil and gas mixture. You're not gonna have older gas sitting in there. Last time I looked, this is in a range of around $220 to $230. I will leave a link down in the description below. And if there is any coupon codes or any deals going on, I'll leave a link down there also. So an update on the water tank. I arrived here and took a peek in the water tank and the water was crystal clear. It was very clean. I know we have had some rain in the meantime. It was about three weeks since we've come down here. There's something I am a little concerned about. I don't think we're out of the woods just yet, is that when I left, I thought the level was pretty close to the top of the tank. Um, it was right at the top of our uh, stainless steel pipe that goes out to the house. And when I took the lid off, it was about 20 inches below that. And I don't think there's any way that we use that amount of water after we filled it up. But we were only here for a day. I took a shower, we flushed the toilet a couple times, we might have ran the dishwasher. So we're probably not looking at any more than like 50 gallons tops. But this is down about two to 300 gallons. I did go around looking for leaks and I did check both toilet tanks. One I already had an issue with at the beginning. I noticed it was dripping water through and this is the one in the master bedroom and it appears that it could be 
using or wasting water here as it's coming up and over that I did lip. adjust the float to remedy that issue, so we'll just have to keep more of an eye on the water tank and see if we're still losing water. When we tore down the old cabin, we uh, saved a bunch of the wood from it, but it had a lot of nails and it. it was piled up in the overhang of our shed. And I've been whittling away a little bit at a time, but today we're going to attack it with three guys and hopefully we can clear this area out and be able to use that overhang again. Alright, so we got most of this area cleared out. We should be able to fit JD under here if we need to or another UTV. And then we also got a good supply of wood stored up in the shed itself when we start building some hunting blinds in the fall. It's a big moment. What the heck? You want to have a few moments alone with this it is, before we go? <laughs> this is big time keeping our bed status right here. I have to pee. Why? You were just up there. I was posted that there. there. Go over there and piss there. I don't know if I have time now. Want to use it one more time? One last time? For How do you pee in those? We're not going to like make a ramp and slide it up, huh? Can I do a moment of silence? <laughs> Let's just get it over with. <laughs> Three of us. One on one side, one on one side, one on the back side. I would Easy. say uh, uh, four sides. Side, okay. side, and then this side, because I don't know about stuff coming up the back. Okay. Well, just <laughs> maybe in the back, I'll tell you that. All right. Well, we're going to kind of shift it or come out this way and then back it in. Yep. Okay. Let's do it. Wait a minute. Right? Are we just going to pick it up? No, we're, we're like picking this, the whole right? crate. The whole tray. I got it, the skid. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, we're going to... We're going to pick it up, though, and go like this, right? The front's going to go towards the cab. We're going to go like this. Oh, you want the back end first? Yeah. All right. You got me walking a long way from my... Uh... You want me to go on that side, then? Yeah, I'll do anything, but if I fall, you too got to pick up that side, because I don't want to... <laughs> you fall, it's falling bitch. on top of you. <laughs> Ready? How, how heavy is the thing? I don't know. We haven't picked it up. Maybe the... Wait, I got to get ready. <laughs> I don't want these balls. Holy crap. <laughs> you sure you're ready? No, I ain't ready. Your last I'll, chance. I'll do it. Let's get it over with. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh my god, this is like flying yeah, carpet together. Do you have that? <laughs> Act like it's hard. Oh my god. Oh, my back. Oh, I'm case my front now. Who put that in like that? That's an intentional stopper. I That's guess we, we definitely earned our beds, huh, John? Those Cash Eyes and Tony are got one bed to fight over. It's looking like my bag's got one bed. I'm going to bet Nicholas wins. I got two beds. One for your stuff and one for you. That's according to the post, which has more endorsed. Man, that, mean, <laughs> that means three of those guys will be sleeping on the couch. Four to four. Any last words? See ya. Good Never riddance. Good toilet. Good Never, riddance. Never complain. <laughs> Good riddance. Just picture all the hell Don put her through. <laughs> you were in there way more than I was. Probably has post-toilet stress syndrome. <laughs> you were in there way uh, more than I was. Yeah, but it's that quantity quality kind of thing. My crap's almost clean.
appreciate everybody watching. I hope you enjoyed and subscribe to these videos. Click on that little bell when you want to know a new one is coming out. And keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs>